Matisse. We are here today to look at the pre-match analysis for the forthcoming Belgium and Denmark fixture. The game falls in the second round of the Group B and it will almost certainly determine who will progress to the final knockout stages. In order to proceed with this analysis, we will analyze five different points. One, the context of both teams. Second, how Belgium will defend in the progression zone. Third, Carrasco's position as a number 10. Fourth, Hoiberg role to provide progression to Denmark. And fifth, Kevin De Bruyne return from the injury. Are you ready? Let's go! Denmark began the Euros with a loss against Finland. Although they had many chances to score, putting in a good performance and managing well the various moments of the game. Their midfield line allows the team to be compact in attacking and defensive phases. Players like Hoiberg or Delaney help the team to become stronger on the defensive phase of the game. On the other hand, Belgium arrived to the Euros with some doubts. The national team, coached by Roberto Martinez, did not have the star man Kevin De Bruyne for the first game. Furthermore, Eden Hazard had an, an impressive season at Real Madrid. Furthermore, players like Lukaku or Carrasco have led their teams to the title in their respective leagues. As we have seen, the base structure of Belgium is a 1-3-4-2-1. However, this structure can switch into a 1-4-3-2-1, creating an inverting pyramid where a space is left on the wings through the central channel and is well protected to avoid inside passes. But the question is, how do they pressure when the ball moves to the wing? Both Menier and Dendonker are responsible of jumping to the fullbacks. While one of these players are doing the pressure, the Tielemans is the one responsible of protecting the center channel, moving close to the defender of the own ball player. At the same time, the opposite side of the midfielder is not exerting the pressure, will be in charge to maintain the balance in the center channel, protecting the elements back. It will be essential for Belgium to execute these movements with a strong assertive motor communication. Otherwise, Denmark will find the way to connect with the forward line. With attacking a structure of goalkeeper 3-4-2-1, Carrasco is tasked to find the left pocket between the fullback, center back, and midfielder's line. Receiving there allows him to break the lines of pressure by quick dribblings and trying to find the dismarkings of Lukaku and Mertens and also the overlaps of the left wing back. However, we should mention that this position is not the current one where Carrasco has played most of the games in this season with Atletico de Madrid. In fact, Carrasco has played most of his games as a left wing back, having the chance to dismark when there is an imbalance on the defensive line or generating situation of one against one with the direct fullback. In this case, we'll see how Roberto Martinez manages Carrasco once Kevin De Bruyne is back from the injury. Hoiberg has achieved a certain degree of influence at Tottenham this year. In the first part of the Premier League season, he was the player with the most progressive passes. This was due to Spurs' great form at the start of the season and also for his capacity to perform the universal fundamental of searching for a game in progression by assessing the risk-benefit of the pass. With this fundamental, Hoiber tries to increase the tempo of the actions, trying first to finish the play by playing towards the opening goal. Also, he can generate numerical and qualitative advantage by finding situations in one against one on the wings. Players like him may break the inverted pyramid created by Belgium by connecting with the more advanced players of the Denmark team. Without any doubt, Kevin De Bruyne is one of the most influential players in these Euros. For his game understanding, for the capacity to create advantage for himself and for the teammates, and of course, for the individual talent that he has showed over the last few years in the Premier League. Kevin has the capacity to play as a midfielder at the base, or even higher up as an attacking midfielder. In previous games with the national team, De Bruyne played behind Lukaku. This movement would affect Carrasco, who would be 
on the left wing replacing Chadil or Hazard. With these changes, every player would be in their optimal zone of influence, gaining the capacity of three important aspects for the team. One, De Bruyne receiving into the intervals and finding the advantages for his teammates. Two, Mertens finding the intervals generated on the defensive line, exploiting his speed by dismarking towards the goal. And three, Carrasco trying to generate situations one against one on the left wing. Finally, on behalf of all MVP school, we would like to deliver a big hug to Christian Eriksen and a fast recovery on this difficult moment. You have all our support, Christian.